This is continuing coverage of the trial of Karen Reed from the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. Now, back to the courtroom. Thank you. It's been pointed out to me that I think we're not making a connection here, and I think it might be my fault. Um, With regard to uh, the timing of how long it took you to go home, um, I believe your your estimate, your best estimate is about five minutes? Is is that your testimony? And when I say home, I'm not talking about from D&E Pizza. I'm talking about that early morning when you're at the waterfall. I understand, yeah. I'd say around, around five minutes, I think, from the waterfall to Maple Street. Fair enough. Uh, so now, if you're leaving the bar at like close to you know, 12, 14, as indicated on the video, you're getting home somewhere around 12, 19, 12, 20, correct? Roughly, yeah. And what were you wearing that night? Um, blue jeans, sneakers, I think, and um, a sweatshirt. Okay. And it had started to snow by that point? A little bit. So the ground was a, a little bit either slushy or wet? Not slushy, but it could, be, could have been wet. Could have, could have been wet. Uh, and uh, the, the snow had not yet started to accumulate or had it? It didn't start, no. All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, you're walking home, but it was cold, correct? Correct. Um, and would you agree that uh, in the best case scenario, you might have had a little bit more clothing on for that cold walk home. I think I had a sweatshirt on. Right, but you could have used something else, right? Oh, in, probably. In, in light of the weather? Probably. All right, because you testified that, that by the time you got home, you were pretty cold, right? Correct. You hadn't, you know, if, if it had been about a five minute walk, that was enough time for you to walk in almost shivering, correct? Sure. And given that there was precipitation, that you know the snow had started, uh, the, the the sweatshirt would uh, absorb the moisture as opposed to repel it. Correct? Sure. And so you were wet as well when you walked in, right? Sure. And by that point in time, you were tired. Correct? I don't remember if I was tired, but okay. I don't remember if I was tired at that point. Okay. Uh, you had worked all day? Correct. Uh, till late in the day, actually into the evening, correct? Correct. Um, taking pizzas in and out of a hot oven? Correct. As well as other food that you serve as well, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. And you're now, uh, and, and by the way, you'd, you'd had a, a couple of drinks or a few drinks, whatever it was, at the waterfall, correct? Correct. And you decided not to go to your brother Brian Albert's house, correct? Correct. Uh, That was in part because you weren't up for the continued partying at that point, correct? Yeah, I just wanted to go home. Right. Uh, And so when you you got home, would you agree with me that your first priority would have been uh, getting out of the wet clothes that you were in? Correct. And where would you have done that within your home? In my bedroom. And is this a townhouse or is it a freestanding residence? It's a con- condominium. Condominium. How many floors? Uh, there's three floors. And your bedroom's on the top floor? Correct. And the entrance is ground level? Correct. When you first entered the home in those wet clothes, where was your wife, Julie? Upstairs in the bedroom. And was she already washed up and ready for bed? She thinks she was lying in bed. And where did you go when you walked in the ground level? I went up to the bedroom. All right. Took off my clothes, jumped in bed. All right. Uh, and uh, do you have a, a master bath with regard to your bedroom? There's a, there's a bathroom, yeah. All right. Uh, that would have been where you brushed your teeth? Uh, yeah. Uh, and washed up? But I did. Do you, that's where I would do those things, but I didn't do them. You didn't those do things. either of those. Things. No. Okay. Uh, did you grab a, a drink of water before nope. you went to bed? Nope. All right. So you essentially uh, came home, and I think we agreed it was around twelve twenty or so, give or take a minute, roughly. Uh, and uh, you made a beeline for your bedroom. Correct. 
Uh, did you uh, fall asleep shortly thereafter? Soon after. Within five minutes or so? Ten minutes? Um, I started to doze off. I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly how soon after I fell asleep. All right. Uh, sometime within five or ten minutes, would you say? I would say more like within 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. So um, with regard to getting home, and we'll call it 1219, because I think that's more consistent with what you said, um, and I, uh, understanding that it's just an estimate. Um, it, if you're walking in the door at 1219, it takes you maybe a minute to get upstairs. About a minute. Um, you kicked off your sneakers downstairs, I imagine. Maybe. I don't remember. That was and, a long time ago. Okay. And then you walked up two flights of stairs. Right? Probably ran up the stairs because I was cold. Okay. All right. So you're getting up there around 1220 or so, correct? Roughly, yeah. And you believe that you dozed off about 15 minutes later, which would have made it about 1235? Somewhere around there. All right. Now, when you came home, you would agree with me that your son, Colin Albert, was not home, correct? Not when I first got home. Uh, and in fact, I think your testimony was that uh, 10 minutes after you got home, he opened the bedroom door. I think that's what I said, yeah. Do you want to stick with that? I'm just trying to recollect what I, you know, thinking it over. So obviously it was a little bit longer. Because you actually woke up when he opened the bedroom door, correct? Uh, I don't think so. Did you not just testify before this jury just, I don't know, maybe an hour ago that you fell asleep and that your son Colin opened the bedroom door and, and woke you up to say goodnight. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's what I said. Okay. Uh, and when you testified to that on direct examination, that was when Mr. Lally was asking you questions, correct? Correct. And you knew that you were under oath at that time, correct? Correct. And you were trying to be as accurate as possible, correct? Trying to be, correct. All right. So in terms of the timing of this, um, assuming that he opened the bedroom door after you already fell asleep, uh, if you're getting home upstairs to your bedroom around 1220 and it takes you 15 minutes to go to bed and that's around 1235, then sometime after you're asleep, after 1235, that's when Colin opens the bedroom door, correct? I don't remember exactly. Well, it's difficult for you to remember how long you'd been asleep for when Colin opened the bedroom door, correct? Correct. Um, you don't know if it was five minutes, 10 minutes or longer, correct? I don't know exactly. Right. But it was some time after you fell asleep. To the best of my recollection. Now, <clears throat> With regard to your son, Colin, he uh, obviously lived in the same neighborhood as John O'Keefe because that's where your family lives, correct? Correct. And back in 2022, uh, Colin Albert was 17 years old? Correct. Part of the year. Uh, and you knew that, uh, like m most teenagers, uh, Colin drank al alcohol with his buddies, correct? Correct. Uh, can you explain uh, for the jury who or what is Nebercracker? What is Nebercracker? Yes. Like the character? That's what I'm asking. It's a character in a cartoon um, called Monster House. <laughs> uh, and would you agree with me that Nebercracker in the movie Monster House was this kind of uh, old curmudgeon who didn't want anybody on his lawn, correct? The character, yes. He was the get off my lawn guy, correct? In the movie, yeah. Um, what was your nickname and your wife Julie's nickname for John O'Keefe? Mr. Nebercracker. All right, and uh, 
your wife Julie actually had John O'Keefe plugged into his contacts as Nevercracker, correct? Correct. Um, in fact, you were there one time when Julie showed Karen her, Karen Reed, uh, her phone to show how John O'Keefe was plugged in as Nevercracker, correct? I believe so. And this whole nickname started because of a conflict that Colin Albert had with John O'Keefe. Correct? Not correct. Uh, John O'Keefe complained to you about things that Colin was doing. Not correct. Uh, he would tell you that Colin used to throw beer cans or beer bottles in his bushes, correct? Objection, Your Honor. So you can answer that? What's your answer to that? That is not correct. Uh, John O'Keefe told you that Colin used to flip him off, correct? Not correct. And say F you to him? Never. Colin used to cut through his yard? Nope, that was Dylan. Uh, you knew that John didn't like people cutting through his yard, correct? No, I don't know that to be true. Okay, so is it your testimony that uh, John O'Keefe invited kids to cut through his lawn all the time? I don't, I don't understand, is that a question? It, it was a question, I guess let me withdraw that and ask this. If, if John O'Keefe is never crap, uh, and he's the get off your lawn guy, are you denying that he doesn't like people cutting through his lawn? Do you want me to, can I explain? I just ask, I ask for an answer to my question. Mr. Lally will get up after I'm done and I'm sure you can explain whatever you want. So no, he's not a, no. All right. Well, you would agree with me that uh, there was a time when John O'Keefe was not home that you and your wife, Julie, went to his house. That is correct. And you entered onto his property, correct? On his front um, property, yes. And you had drinks in your hand. Correct. And you thought it would be funny to have a photo taken of you and your wife with drinks in your hand on his property, correct? Correct. And you knew it would be funny because you knew it would annoy him, correct? Jackson, you're on. Well, you can go ahead. Can you answer that? Yeah, he was actually asking us to watch his house while he was away. Uh, right, but that doesn't answer my question, which was, you, he didn't ask you to go onto his property with drinks in your hand and take a photo, correct? He asked us to watch his property. Okay, but again, in answer to my question, the answer is no, he did not ask us to go on his property and take pictures of ourselves with drinks in our hand, correct? Yeah, he didn't ask me to send him a photo. All right. Um, and you would agree with me that uh, Nevercracker wouldn't like a photo of somebody on his lawn with drinks in his hand, in their hands, correct? The, cartoon, the cartoon character, Nevercracker? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Sustain. Next question, please, yes. Mr. Yanetti. I have the uh, photo. <laughs> May I approach you? Yes. Mr. Albert, I place two photographs before you. If you could take a look at those and tell the jury if you recognize what they depict. I do. Uh, what do those photos depict? Um, it's me and my wife straddling John's fence. We're giving a thumbs up in one of them and a smile in another one. Okay. Uh, and you say John's fence, so that's actually on John's property, correct? Uh, part of it is, yeah. I mean, I don't know what the easement is from the street to the fence as ownership goes, but yeah. All right. I know the town owns a certain portion of it. Would you agree with me that that photo was taken in April of 2021? I'm not sure when it was taken, but if that's what you have for a date, then that's it's fine. Okay. Uh, who took that picture? That's a good question. I have no idea. Uh, where was your son Colin that night when you had that picture taken? I have no idea. Would you agree with me that you texted those photos or somebody texted those photos, whether it was you or your wife, Julie, to John O'Keefe? 
Absolutely. And uh, off of those, uh, those are fair and accurate representation of the photos that you took? Yeah. All right. I would offer those, Your Honor. All right. Any objection? No, Your Honor. And with the court's permission, may they be published for the jury? Okay. Uh, with regard to that first photo, uh, is that, well, first of all, whose house is that in the background? That's John's. And that is you on the right and your wife, Julie, on the left? Correct. We have the second photo, please. Okay. Uh, that is also uh, John's house in the background there? Correct. And again, that's you on the right and Julie on the left, correct? Correct. Okay, we can take that photo now. <coughs> um, now, would you agree with me that those photos give some context to the text that you sent him on January 28th when you were trying to get him to come out and you threatened to, quote, fuck up his lawn if he didn't come out that night. What do you mean give context to? Well, in, in other words, here you are sent, texting him photos of you and your wife on his lawn, correct? Yes. Uh, and that's a common theme that explains the January 28th text where you were threatening to fuck up his lawn. Correct? Objection, Your Honor. Okay. Um, I just have uh, one more area that I want to cover with you, sir. Um, you uh, previously confirmed that when you walked in your door on January 29th of 2022, after coming home from the waterfall, um, your son Colin was not home, correct? That's correct. Um, at that time, you had no personal knowledge of where he had been that night, correct? That's correct. Um, since that time, you know that he was at your brother Brian's house that night, Brian Albert. That's correct. Um, your old home, correct? Where I grew up, yep. And you knew that address to be 34 Fairview Road. Correct. And you knew that that was the same house outside which John O'Keefe was found dead later that morning, correct? Correct. I may have a moment. Sure. Just uh, one other question, sir. Um, when you spoke to Trooper Proctor on February 10th of 2022, you would agree with me that you never mentioned that Colin Albert was at your brother Brian's house that night, correct? Objection, Your Honor. I don't remember. All right. Thank you. Redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Albert, you were asked uh, some questions about um, being a selectman. Were you a selectman at the time on January 28, 2022? No. And about how long after that was it that you came? Sometime in April that the election was over, April, second week in April, maybe? <clears throat> so that uh, photograph that you were shown with respect to yourself and the, the former Chief Berkowitz of the Kim Police, when was that? Um, it was a fundraiser, so it was probably like two or three weeks before the election. So January, February, March something, end of March maybe. So well after January 28th, 2022? Yes. And you were asked some questions about your brother selling the house. Now, prior to your brother selling the house, you had sold your house, correct? Correct. And why was that? Why was that? Yeah. It just, just made, more, it made sense for us. You know, it was just a just financial decision. Kids were getting older, is that correct? Yeah. One was in the Navy. Yep. Uh, another was about to go to college. Correct. And what, if any, relation um, did that have uh, to your brother selling the house? 
So once you found out that I was selling my objection. You know what? I'm going to allow it. Once he found out I was selling my house, he decided that it might be a good idea for him to sell his house. His kids were getting older. So I gave him the, my real estate's number, the guy who sold my house. And that selling in the house, was that something that you would discuss with your brother prior to January 28th, 2022? Yes, yeah, soon after. Hey, let, let's move on from that. Now, with regards, um, with regards to your son Colin when he came home that night, you indicated um, that it was about 10 minutes after. Now, was that 10 minutes after you arrived home or 10 minutes after you got into bed? 10 minutes after I jumped into bed. Now, with reference uh, to uh, your son Colin, he came home, you saw him that night, correct? When he came home? Yes. Yeah, he just leaned his head in the door. And when he leaned his head in the door, did you, similar to what I had asked you about Mr. O'Keefe, did you observe any sort of injuries or anything like that to his face? No. You saw your son the next day as well? Yes. Did you observe any injuries to him at any point None. in time? None. And you mentioned that you went over to your brother Brian Avalt's house and both he and Mr. Higgins were there, correct? Correct. As far as your interactions with both Brian Albert and Brian Higgins that following day, what if any injuries did you observe on them then? None. Now, with regard to um, the Nevercracker, um, what was sort of the origination of, of that? It's, it's a joke. It's, um, so my son Dylan, who is my littlest one, he was cutting across John's lawn one day, coming home from the school, walking. This is before John had a fence that went this way, like on Pleasant Street. So it would just cut off like a couple of minutes. He ran across John's lawn one day. This is my littlest son who... I don't even know at the time, he might've been like nine, 10. I'm not sure exactly how old he was. And John yelled something to him. Hey kid, get off my lawn. So was, John was just making a joke. So Dylan got scared. He ran home and told my wife, Julie. And then Julie in turn called, um, I think said, called Jen maybe and said, Hey, uh, John just yelled at Dylan. And, uh, and I think Jen reached out to John and John felt terrible. And John came down, down the street. Uh, John asked, what kind of candy Dylan liked. And John brought Dylan a bag of candy and just said, hey, I was just kidding. It was just, so from that point on, we called him Mr. Nevercracker and it was a joke between John. John thought it was funny and. Now, as far as um, those photographs that you indicated that you took on his fence, uh, yeah. sent to him when he was away, is that correct? Correct. And that was after he'd asked you to watch his house yeah. while he was away? Yeah. And how did he respond to those photographs? He thought it was hilarious. We actually showed um, him uh, other people that photo too. They thought it was funny. All right, we're gonna wrap it up, Mr. Allen. <laughs> One last question, Your Honor. So after you sent uh, the text message as far as to come over here and then made the, the reference to his lawn, Mr. O'Keefe then came over to the lawn. <laughs> yeah, he came over after. Nothing further. <laughs> Nothing further. Okay. All right, you are all set, Mr. Elder. Thank the jurors, you. Jurors, we're going to take a uh, recess. It's not going to be just to sit in there and let the jurors go. Uh, it's, it's not going to be too long because we're going to end around 12. If minutes. the witness would just stay where you are, thank you. Sorry, so, sorry. That's okay. So, jurors, if you'd fold your notebooks, please stay on your chairs. Follow me. All right, here we go. So, Paul, about a few minutes. You are break, muted. I want to get more testimony. Okay. Thank you. Please be seated. Close back. All right. Mr. Lally, your next witness, please. May we approach before the next witness is called, Your Honor? Okay. All right. So, Mr. Lally, who's your next witness? Call with the call, Ms. Julie Albert, to the stand. Okay. Mr. 
improvements that any of this approach. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You saw me swear the evidence to give the court and jury in the case down here. It should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me out. Okay. Thank you. All right, whenever you're ready, Mr. Lally. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Could you uh, please state your name and, and spell your last name for the jury? Julie Albert, A-L-B-E-R-T. And uh, where do you live now? I live at 22 Maple Street in Canton. And uh, how long have you lived with you? A little over two years. And uh, how long in total have you lived in Canton? My whole life, uh, 48 years. And where did you live uh, just prior to living on Maple? I lived at Seven Meadows Avenue in Canton. And how long a uh, period of time did you live at Seven Meadows Avenue? Oh, um, 15 plus, 20 years, about 20 years. And um, do you have kids? Yes, I have three boys. And uh, are you married? Yes, I am. And what's your husband's name? Christopher Albert. And uh, your three boys, how old are you? Um, my oldest, Christopher, is 25. My second son, Colin, is 20. And my youngest son, Dylan, is 16. And uh, do each of them, um, where, where do they live? Do they live with you? They all live with me, yes. And uh, your husband, does he work? Yes. What does he do? He owns a restaurant in Canton. What's the name of the restaurant? d and &E Pizza. And where is that located? 618 Washington Street. Now, when you lived on Meadows Avenue, can you describe for the jury sort of, if you know, about how many houses were on Meadows? I would say maybe eight on each side. And Meadows comes out to a main road, is that correct? Yes, Pleasant Street. Okay. And um, while you were living on Meadows Avenue, did you have occasion to come to know someone by the name of John O'Keefe? Yes, I did. And where did John live in relation to you? Um, John's house was at the top of the street, and there's two houses. There was two houses between John's house and my house. And if you recall, about how long did you know John O'Keefe, or when did he move into Memphis? I think he moved in in 2017-ish, maybe. And I've probably known him since maybe 2019. And how would you describe sort of your relationship with John? We were friendly. Um, we were neighbors. You know, I'd see him all the time coming in and out of the street because he's at the top of the street when I pulled out of the street. And um, we were friendly. And in addition to you knowing Mr. O'Keefe, mm -hmm. were there other sort of people that, uh, that knew you that also knew him? Yes, yes. Who, who were some of those people? Um, well, I know I knew John through Jennifer McCabe. And who is Jennifer McCabe? Uh, um, she's one of my closest friends. Now, <clears throat> you knew that John had uh, two children that he was um, guardian for. Yes. Um, and you were familiar with both his niece and his nephew. Yes. Them. Now, at some point um, through Mr. O'Keefe, did you come to know somebody by the name of Karen? Reed? Yes. When about was it that you met Mr. Um, maybe in like 2021, like, you know, pulling in and out of the street if they were outside, if, you know, a couple times out socially, probably in 2021, I would say. Um, and if you could, just uh, so we're clear, uh, do you see Ms. Reed in the courtroom? Yes, there? between her lawyers right over there. That's a record of like identification okay. by the witness. Now, <clears throat> on some social occasions that you were talking about, when you would see them out, would you see, uh, would you have occasion to socially interact with Mr. O'Keefe and Ms. Reed? Yes. Is that something that like you and your husband did together, or was it more of a group setting type? No, a group setting. And with reference to, uh, did you have occasions where you would socially hang out or interact with Mr. O'Keefe in which Ms. Reed wasn't there? Um, I can only honestly remember one time, and that was, I don't even know if they were together at the time. And had you ever socially interacted or, or spent time with Ms. Reed separate and apart from Mr. O'Keefe? No. Now, if I could 
Turn your attention to January 28th, uh, 2022. Do you recall that day? Yes. Do you recall what day of the week it was? Um, Friday. And uh, what, if anything, did you have uh, planned for that particular evening? Um, the next day was my nephew's birthday. So we were all, a bunch of us were going to go out that night, um, the night before, to um, a bar in Canton. And by the night before, you mean the night before his birthday? Yes. And that nephew, um, what, what was that nephew's name? Brian. Brian Jr. And if you know about how old was he turning or how, well, let me start with this. How old is he now? Um, he's 24. Um, so just turned 24 a few months ago? January, yep. And so he would have been turning, what, 22 at that point? Yes. Um, and when you say we had plans to sort of go out, who was, who was the we? Um, myself, my, his mother, Nicole, my niece, Caitlin, um, and a couple of Brian's friends. Now, and you mean Brian Jr.'s friends? Yes. Okay. And so Brian Albert Jr. has a mother named Nicole Albert, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, how is uh, she sort of, how is she related to you? Um, she's my sister-in-law. Our husband's a brother. Um, so your husband, Christopher, has a brother? Brian. Brian. Okay. And that would be sort of Brian. Brian Senior. Senior. For lack yep. of a better term. Yep. Um, your husband, Christopher, how many siblings does he have? Six. And Brian is the oldest? Is the oldest, right? yes. And so there were plans to go out that evening, the day before Brian Albert Jr.'s birthday, correct? Yes. And uh, what were the plans? What did they sort of consist of? Um, we were just going to go to Waterfall. And is Waterfall? Uh, it's, where is it? it's a bar in Canton on Washington Street. And from your husband's pizza shop at D&E to the Waterfall, about how far away are the two from each other? Um, very close. I mean, 200 steps maybe. You can... Very, very close. Um, same side of the street or opposite? No, opposite sides. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when it came to that day, um, where did you go? Did you go to the waterfall first or somewhere else or if you know? I went to my sister-in-law, Nicole's house, to pick her up. And do you know uh, the address where your sister-in-law and your brother-in-law live? 34 Fairview, where they lived, 34 Fairview Road. Um, and that was somewhere that you had been numerous occasions before? Yes. <laughs> and when you arrived at uh, 34 Fairview Road, uh, you went inside the house? I think I went inside for a moment, yeah, just to wait. And do you know who, if anyone, did you see in there that you knew or recognized or, or didn't? Um, I know my, my niece, Caitlin, was in there, my nephew, Brian. I don't, I think, I don't recall. I. I don't recall who else was in there. Your sister-in-law, Nicole, was she there? Yeah, she was ready to leave. Okay. Yep. And um, when you left, I mean, mm -hmm. sort of you in the plural. So you drove, is that correct? I drove. Yep. And uh, who, if anyone, went along with you in your car? Um, Nicole, my sister-in-law, and Caitlin, my niece. And Brian did not end up coming with us. And so your nephew, Brian, for whom you had initially made the plans to go yep. out to celebrate, didn't end up coming? <clears throat> correct. And uh, why was that? I don't, he just, I don't think he was failing up to it. And uh, if you know about what time was it that you picked your sister-in-law and your niece up and then went to Waterfall? I would, I don't remember exactly, but I would probably say between maybe 7.30 and 8, 7.30, like around 7.30 maybe. And uh, you arrive at the Waterfall, you go in. Um, mm -hmm. If you could just... Um, Explain for the jury sort of when you walk into the, the door of the waterfall, where was it that the three of you went? When you walk into the door, there's a couple high top tables, long high top tables in front of you. And we just sat down at a high top table right when you walk through the door. Now, from your experience either that evening or prior evenings uh, on certain nights, does the waterfall have any kind of sort of entertainment? Yeah, they always have. Um, every week's different. They have bands. And from your recollection, was there a band there that night? Yes, there was. And do you recall where you were seated in relation to the band? Um, I was sitting at the end of the high top table closest to the door that you walk in. And the band was 
to the right of me against a wall and kind of like an alcove, like a little against the wall. And when you went there, was the band already sort of set up and playing or, or did that happen later? I think they set up while we were there, I think. And so initially when you go there, do you go there and just have drinks or did you eat something or what? what we ate and yeah. Yeah. And while you were there, as far as um, during sort of the meal portion of it, was there anyone else that joined you? I know my um, niece's boyfriend, Tristan Morris, came. I don't remember exactly when it was during that, but I know he was there. And then during the meal part, I don't, um, I don't think during the meal part anyone else... I, I don't think. So you recall, as far as the meal part was concerned, it's you, your sister-in-law, Nicole, your niece, Caitlin, and her boyfriend, Tristan Morris. Correct. And uh, Mr. Morris, did he stay for any extended period of time, or, or when was it that he left? I know he stayed for a little bit, but I honestly can't remember what time exactly he left. Now, your husband, was he working on that day? Yes, he was. And... Um, had you been in communication with him as to where you were going to be? Yes. And so the plan was basically for him to meet you at the waterfall when he was done with work. Correct, yes. And if you know about what time was it that your husband, uh, Christopher, came over to the waterfall? Maybe not 9.30, 10, I, maybe. I don't and remember I don't exactly. Yes, just yeah. you know approximate time. Yeah. Um, so at some time around 9.30 or so, your husband Christopher comes over to the waterfall? Yes. And uh, what, if anything, do, did he do when he got there? I came in, this. yeah. He came in, did he get anything to eat, anything to drink? I'm sh yeah, he prob probably ordered a drink and just stood by the table, I would think. And um, you and the people in your group, were you drinking that night? Yes. What, what is it, do you recall specifically what you had to drink? Um, I think I had just a couple glasses of wine. And uh, your husband, what does he, do you recall specifically what he had that night? What he would drink is Miller Lite. Okay. And that's sort of typically what he would drink yes. when he was out? Yes. Okay. And uh, your sister-in-law, Nicole, do uh, you recall what she was drinking? I would assume White Claw, a White Claw. And uh, same question with regard to your niece, Kate. Yes, probably White Claw as well. Now, while um, while you were there, who, if any, um, so after your husband came in, mm -hmm. who, if anyone else, sort of came in and joined uh, the group that you were with? Um, my brother-in-law, Brian Albert, and his friend, Brian Higgins. And obviously, you know your brother-in-law, Brian Albert, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Is that uh, yes? you know... Yes. Thank you, Matt. Um, you just have to answer obviously. So, did you know Mr. Higgins as well? Yes. And how did you know Mr. Higgins? I just know him from being friends with my brother-in-law. Uh, so you knew him just sort of through your brother-in-law, Brian, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And um, do you know when they arrived in relation to when your husband, Christopher, arrived? I don't, I don't, I don't recall. Uh, but some point after, correct? Yes. Then after um, they arrived, uh, who, if anyone else, do you recall sort of arriving and, and joining in your group? Um, Jennifer McCabe and Matt McCabe. And there was a couple, um, I don't even know their name, Colakitis. They arrived. I don't know their first names. Um, and John and Karen arrived shortly after that. And just so we can clear up people, as far as Jennifer mm -hmm. McCabe, we've already mentioned her and Matthew, was that her husband? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the other couple that you were talking about are sort of guessing their names. Had you ever met them before? No. Nope. Um, not anybody that you're particularly friends with or anything like that? No. I know them, who they are, from seeing them maybe at a sporting event or something, but I've never been introduced to them. And when you say sort of sporting events, sporting events in relation to, in relation to what? Um, 
basket if they were at like a basketball game and I was at a game like I've just seen them around. I'm assuming probably sporting events, probably a basketball game. And I'm sure it's pretty well understood with this. I just want to clarify. So when you say sporting events, these are kids sporting events? Kids sporting events, yes. And so which kids sporting events would you be at that you would see this couple that you didn't know? Um, Your kids or something? No, else? Jennifer McCabe's kids. Okay. Um, so you would go to sporting events for Jennifer McCabe's kids and see this couple? Then. Yes. Okay. And uh, if you know about how long after Ms. Uh, Brian Albert and Mr. Higgins arrived, uh, did... Um, did the McCabe's and this other couple of that. I really, I don't remember okay. exactly. But after, after Mr. Albert and Mr. Higgins, correct? Correct. Now then you mentioned uh, Mr. O'Keefe and Ms. Reed came in at some point as well. Mm -hmm. So and you have yes. to make sure you say yes or no, okay? And the other thing you say, I assume or I guess, don't answer. Okay. Um, if you don't know either. Okay. More raw courtroom coverage of the trial of Karen Reed is coming up from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Press subscribe so you don't miss a minute.